All right, welcome everybody to this explanation video. Today we're going to be discussing the bump bump bum closure of GameSpy. Yes, GameSpy, powered by GameSpy.com, is being closed down. We are going to be losing official online hosting of a majority of the Command & Conquer games, if not all of them, as well as a number of other games. Just an incredible number of games are going to be affected by this closure. So we're going to be discussing what happened there, what GameSpy is, why this matters to you guys. Hey, you know, I'm a Command & Conquer player. Why do I have to care about some random company named GameSpy closing down? It matters. If you play this game online, you will need to know this information. All right, so here we are at the official statement directly from PoweredByGameSpy.com. And we can see that the official statement directly from them verbatim is effective May 31st, 2014. GameSpy will cease providing all hosted services for all games still using GameSpy. If you have any questions about how this impacts your favorite title, please contact the game's publisher for more information. Thanks for a great ride. So what in the world does that mean? What games use GameSpy? Why is this important information for me to know? This seems like a pretty insignificant bit of text on a random web page that isn't really that easy to get to. So why does this matter to me? Well, let's jump over to the next page and take a look. Here we're looking at the list of the currently supported GameSpy games. So we've got a ton and ton of titles ranging from 2002 up to 2010. So we can see that there are a massive, massive range of titles, as well as a huge range of publishers that are going to be affected by this. I mean, we're not talking just random indie developers here that are just kind of throwing their games up trying to get some players to play them. We're talking massive blockbuster titles. You know, we've got Electronic Arts, we've got Konami, we've got Rockstar Games, you've got Bohemia Interactive, and countless others that are going to be affected by this. And what does that mean for us? I mean, the fact that Kane's Wrath, Red Alert 3, Tiberium Wars, and countless others, which I can't even begin to divulge into because, I mean, this list just ranges so far. And, I mean, we could sit here and continue to go through all the different games that are going to be affected. But basically, what does it mean that this is closing down? Well, the big thing that it means is we're going to be losing the ability to host games through their official online service. So when you typically go into, uh, into a game, like, let's say, just for reference, into Kane's Wrath. You go into Kane's Wrath multiplayer online. Now you're not going to be able to do that. When you go to click onto online, if these servers are in fact down, it's just going to say that wasn't able to communicate with server or something to that effect. I'm not sure what their error message will be, but you won't be able to connect to the online service, effectively nullifying your ability to play online. And that is a massive, massive blow to the Command and Conquer 3 online community, as we're essentially going to be completely eliminated. So what are we going to do? I mean, are we just going to roll over and take this the way that, you know, GameSpy has given it to us? Or are we going to try to find a way around this, a way to keep our community alive and potentially even make it better than it used to be? I think we're going to go with the latter. So let's go ahead and get into the details of how we're going to go about doing that. Right now we're looking at the official statement from EA on the EA titles that have been hosted by GameSpy. This is information that was released on May 9th, 2014, directly from EA.com. Their statement says that since GameSpy's announcement, our teams have been working to evaluate options to keep services up and running. Unfortunately, due to technical challenges and concerns about the player experience, we do not have a solution at this time. Online services for EA games on the GameSpy platform will be closed down at the end of June will be closed down. That's the important bit of text to take away. So EA does not plan to continue supporting this this set of titles that are listed on GameSpy. So there's there's literally no official option coming forward. So those of you that are sitting there holding out saying, oh, EA will come and save us. No, they won't. They've already announced that they will not do it. And to further, further give you guys some more information about why I believe that they're not going to provide any alternative is that they say in the next bit of text here they say we are still investigating community supported options to preserve online functionality for these titles such as multiplayer since significant technical hurdles remain and at this time we don't have anything to announce so they're not even looking into their own official options for keeping the online functionality running they're saying community supported options so they're saying they're potentially looking to give some information as to you know the best alternative to the official hosting, but they have no plans to actually rebuild their multiplayer infrastructure, which is understandable. It's a, it's an ex 
expensive bit of infrastructure to reproduce and it's a huge amount of development cost for older titles that are not necessarily profitable at this point for them. So that's the statement from EA. Those of you that are holding out, waiting, saying, no, this isn't going to happen, thinking that this is all some kind of a some kind of a ruse, it's not. This is real stuff, guys. So stay with me, and we're going to be moving on to what we plan to do in the future. Finally, we arrive here at GameReplays.org. That's right, GameReplays.org, everybody. If you have not signed up for this website yet, be sure to get over there, sign up. It is definitely going to be an important thing to do, especially due to the fact that these online services are going to be lost here. The, at least the official online services will be lost. So here we're taking a look at the official post from GameReplays.org about the alternatives to the official online hosting. That's right, everybody. We're not taking this one lying down. We're not giving up. We're not just saying, oh, GameSpy is gone. So I guess, meh, all of these games are toast. Nope. We're going to continue to find ways to battle it out in the online modes, as well as take it to the next level with more tournaments and just keep the community going at the same pace, just in a different way. So let's go through a couple of the different options that we have here available, and I'll run you through them start to finish. As we take a look at this post, we can see that there's a number of different services that have been researched, that have been tested, we've been Playing around with all of these different services, just trying to figure out which ones work, which ones don't, which ones are viable for tournaments, which ones are good for just standard online play, which could be the, you know, the bridge between the two. And I'm going to be giving you guys the rundown on the top three, in my opinion, that over a period of time of testing, that these three are the really the ones that I see as being the most viable, the most accessible, and really the most user friendly. So. We're going to be taking a look, namely, at Game Ranger, Hungle, and Evolve. Taking a look at Game Ranger first, this is directly from GameRanger.com. Again, all the links are going to be provided in the description, so if you have any questions about where to find this information, you can always take a look through the description of the video, and you're going to be able to find all the links and follow me straight through the process of getting there. Again, um, the, all of these links are directly clicked from that post on GameReplays.org. And again, that's going to be linked in the description. So all this info is right in there. And if you run into any questions, be sure to drop me a line in the description or rather in the comment section of the video. But at any rate, we're here at GameRanger.com. This is the main landing page. And don't be alarmed if your page looks a little bit different than mine. This is something that you guys are going to need to keep in mind as I do have a program called Adblock Plus running on Google Chrome right now. So there may be advertisements on your page, they may not be showing here, so don't be super alarmed if it looks a little bit different than mine, it's okay. If you're at this page, then you know that you're in the right place. So at any rate, we're going to go ahead and click on the Download Game Ranger program, and as we can see it automatically downloads, and we'll be going straight to my downloads folder. Here it's going to give you just a quick idea as to what you need to do, so they walk you through the, the process of what you're going to have to do in order to get Game Ranger going. So you can you have to run the Game Ranger setup application, create a new free account. So with this service, you will have to create an account. And no, you don't have to be panicked about the fact that you're creating an account. I've created an account. I've used my email address. I've actually created a separate email address just to test this to see if they're going to be sending out all kinds of spam emails and just absolutely flooding your account with all kinds of advertisements and just different things like that. And I haven't been hit with a single advertisement or any type of email from Game Ranger whatsoever. You have no worries there. You can create that account and not have to worry too much about that. Then you have to activate your account and log in. Again, that's going to be an email that's going to be sent to the account that you log in with, and it's going to be an activation email. You go ahead and click on that, and it will allow you to log in. You can invite your friends, host or join a game. We'll get into that when we actually get into the server browser here in a moment. At any rate, we'll go ahead and close or rather minimize this page down. We'll go into my downloads folder. As we can see here, the Game Ranger setup icon is here. We'll click on that and we'll click on run. So we'll close that down. And we can see here, this is gonna be the install panel for Game Ranger. And we can see there's a couple of different startup items that you can choose. It says create a Game Ranger desktop icon, create a Game Ranger quick launch icon, start Game Ranger when Windows starts. So I'm gonna go ahead and deselect the bottom two as I don't want to create a quick launch icon or allow Game Ranger to start automatically when Windows starts. I find that to be kind of annoying and it kind of slows down my startup process, especially if I'm not necessarily looking to use Game Ranger when I when I turn my computer on every single time. 
So I'm gonna just go, gonna go ahead and deactivate both of those. I do wanna create a desktop icon so that that way we can see what we're working with here and we'll go ahead and continue to install. As you can see here, it's going through the process of downloading all of the, the services and components that it needs in order to get running. This is a typical install thing. And here we go. Welcome to Game Ranger. Game Ranger is a multiplayer online gaming service and is the easiest way to play online with your friends, blah, blah, blah. Click next to get started. Okay. Typical end user license agreement. They're going to go ahead and give you all the legalese saying, hey, we're not responsible if this makes your computer blow up. Um, you know, if you decide to sit behind your computer and become obese, we're not going to be paying for your hospital bills. You guys can go through all the legalese if you want. I'm going to go ahead and trust these guys. We're going to go ahead and click next. To use the Game Ranger, you must agree to the terms and conditions of use. Click agree or disagree, and you can make that choice for yourself. I can't make it for you. I'm going to go ahead and agree because obviously I want to allow Game Ranger to install. Again, we discussed this back when we were looking at that install page. I've already gone ahead and created an account. I'm not going to go ahead and bother to create a new account just for the sake of you guys seeing how that process works. I wish I had done it back when I first signed up, but at any rate, we're going to go ahead and use my existing account. It will be going in here, so I'll go ahead and type in my information and apologies for the keyboard sounds. I do have a mechanical keyboard, so it is quite loud. And here is my super secure password, which I completely forgot. We'll try to retype it there. I think that is right. We'll go ahead and click our closest city. This is just going to be strictly for time, and I believe it's also for uh, getting you set up in the correct area so that that way you're getting the right game showing up at the right the right locations in terms of ping. We'll go ahead and click on that. And now we can say Game Ranger is now ready to log into your account. Click finish button to log in. We'll go ahead and finish. As we can see, we're done. I mean, we're, we're done. It's completely installed. We're logged in and we're ready to go here. We can see they're going to have Game Ranger news, which pops up. This is kind of annoying. This pops up every time you start up. I'm not a particular fan of that. I wish it would just pop up once and just cool. You know, I don't really care. So we'll close that down. But at any rate, here we are at the main lobby, and we can expand this or make it smaller as we want. It doesn't really matter too much. You can't make it smaller than that top advertisement. And this is something that is going to be important for you guys to know with Game Ranger. Game Ranger is a free service. They're not for not, you know, they're not doing this for free. I mean, obviously, they want to turn some kind of a profit on this service. So they're selling advertisement slots. There's no real way to hide these advertisements. The thing is, you're just going to have to be diligent not to click on them. I mean, this is how they make their money, and just be be aware of the fact that you're likely going to end up clicking on them because, you know what, they place these advertisements in a way that it's, you're going to click on them occasionally. At any rate, we can see if I scroll over here, this has an auto-loading service, so if, if I scroll over it for too long, it's going to automatically start playing. Well, the story of Brava is and as we can hear... All of our robots. I'm really getting tired of listening to this guy, so we're going to go ahead and turn him down. So what I've just done here is in the volume mixer of Windows, and I'll actually close this down and restart it so you guys can see the process that I just went through, is I clicked on, I left clicked on the little sound notification bar down in the bottom right hand corner, clicked on mixer, and then now you can see all of the different services that are running, all the different programs and you can select your audio levels based on what it is that you're doing. So with Game Ranger, anything that I see in terms of Game Ranger, I turn it all the way down because this has video advertisements and there's just no way around it. I mean, again, they're not they're not a not-for-profit company. You know, they're trying to at least support themselves and support the effort that they're making towards creating this service. So I can, I can understand that and we're just gonna have to deal with it as it progresses here. So I'll turn that volume all the way down. So at least this way, I don't have that annoying audio going to my ears if I'm talking to somebody, either on Skype or TeamSpeak, or maybe even on the phone, or maybe I'm just sitting here listening to music. I don't want to have that advertisement playing in the background. But at any rate, we'll go ahead and close that down. And as we can see here, this is going to be your friends list on the right-hand side. And we can see I already have Monster Tamer added here. Unfortunately, I don't have anybody else added at the moment. So taking a look at the server browser here, we're actually going to be scrolling through all of the different games that are supported by Game Ranger, as well as all of the different rooms that are available for each game. So as we can see, Age of Empires has a pretty large following on Game Ranger and is obviously at the top of the list due to the fact that it starts with A. But at any rate, we're going to go ahead and filter out the Command & Conquer games, or at least the games that we want to see. So what we're going to do is up here at this little drop-down menu, we're going to go ahead and click on that 
drop down bar and we'll select my games and what this will do is game ranger goes ahead and searches your fi your file directory and determines what executable files you have available and then cross references that with the games that are currently supported by game ranger so as we can see i have age of empires 3 installed on my computer at the moment as well as the asian dynasties and then if we scroll down further we can see command and conquer 3 kane's wrath bam there's a couple of games that we're looking for i believe you can edit that my games folders to select only certain games for whatever reason i've filtered these games but at any rate, that's how you're going to go ahead and search for different games. I'm sure there's a way to filter it so that that way you can get just a specific game to show up. So if you're just a Command & Conquer 3 Kane's Wrath player or maybe just a Tiberium Wars player, you can filter it so only games in that particular game show up in this actual server browser. But at any rate, we're going to jump on to taking a look at hosting a game ourselves. Now I'll show you guys how to actually host a game. So from here we can see that the, these are all the games that are listed. Now let's say maybe we want to create our own lobby. So here we'll go ahead and click host. From here you click from the drop down menu which game you want to actually host a match in. And we'll go ahead and select Kane's Wrath. You can select the max number of players and here is where the important thing is with Game Ranger. And this is something that I cannot stress enough. With Game Ranger anytime you are playing you have to set up a new room. So like let's say you get in here we create a lobby we create it with a max player of 8 and we get, you know, let's say we pack it full of eight people and we join a game. Once you join that game, that lobby is no longer available. So once those guys in the G Shepherd lobby go into the game, you won't be able to see that here in the lobby system. It's gonna immediately go into a game and they're gonna be dumped into their own little network lobby. From there, you can play against any of the eight players that are in that, that particular setup or whatever the actual max player account is gonna be. You can play against them in whatever configuration and however many times you would like. But once you leave that particular setup, you're not able to join back. You're going to go ahead and create a lobby anyways. We can just create the description and we'll leave the password off. Allow friends only. Allow gold and silver accounts only. Again, those are options we're not going to worry about. So we'll go ahead and create that. And as we can see, when we create a lobby, and this is another thing that's important. Anytime you create a lobby, a massive video ad pops up. This happens every single time you create a game lobby. There's no avoiding it. And as you can see, the... These advertisements can range between anything. I mean, we're getting some interesting advertisements here. So here we've got this main chat lobby. We can say, oh, hi to everybody. And anytime you're talking, it's going to pop up in this chat. You'll be able to see the players that are actually in the lobby here on the right hand side. And again, this will be their names. They will not be able to smurf unless they create separate Game Ranger accounts, which is certainly possible. And you can choose to lock the room after the fact. You can add passwords so like let's say somebody joins the lobby and is spamming you guys like uh, you know they're hitting you guys with all kinds of messages you know all kinds of hate mail or maybe it's just players that you don't necessarily want in the lobby with you you can go ahead and and lock the room and then message your friends or whoever it may be after the fact and say hey you know this is the password now you can join back and this way we can create a lobby that's going to be protected and this way you don't have to re-host the lobby so you can already you've already sat through that advertisement you don't have to re-sit through it and you can just use this room continually and from here you can use the room options and you can change all of these different settings like the max player count you can change the description on the fly and again you can add these these different selection boxes on the side you can't change the game that you're playing though once you choose a game it's done you cannot change that if you want to pick a different game you have to rehost a new lobby all right everybody so a game ranger native has actually gone ahead and joined into my game here mr maji he's been kind enough to allow me to use him as a guinea pig or a test subject whichever you prefer to call him so we're going to be showing you guys exactly what it looks like when we go ahead and click on that start button so i've hosted a lobby here as i just explained in that last bit and we're going to go ahead and click that start button now so you guys can see exactly what this looks like and at this point i'm actually taking my hands off the keyboard and mouse we'll see that it automatically goes ahead and launches my game sometimes if you're launching through origin you will need to log in as it will set you into an offline mode just because of the fact that it's changing your network adapter but you'll see here that it automatically clicks me straight into the game and right into the actual created game and you'll see Maji will be joining slowly behind me just waiting for his game to actually start up and click through that to get to this point and there he is right there so we'll go ahead and ready up and we'll show you guys exactly what it looks like here when the game starts and we're all set now so we're gonna go ahead and join straight in and show you guys exactly what it looks like inside the game and show you that it, there's not really any added lag 
due to the fact that we're actually connecting through a third-party software as opposed to that official hosting. And this is on one of the new 1.02 plus maps. But as we can see, everything is exactly the same. I mean, can still slide around the map. There's no frame tearing or anything like that. It's all just standard schmandard Kane's Wrath stuff. And I mean, there is a little bit of lag, but I would imagine that's more attributable to the connection between this player and myself, which would be present on the GameSpy servers as well, as I have no idea where this guy is hailing from. But at any rate, we can see that it is working quite well, so I'm going to actually go ahead and sell up out of this game after I drop my refinery, which should only be another second or two. But I'm quite pleased with the way this works. It's very simple for those of you that don't necessarily want to spend too much time uh, screwing around with network options. It's very, very easy. You just create an account, you create a, a lobby, and then you can click the start button and you're right into a game. So at any rate, you guys can see this is exactly how it works. Again, no real, mu real layer of added lag and we are all set here. So we're gonna be moving straight on to the next hosting option, which is gonna be Tungle, and you should be seeing that coming right up. All right, everybody, now that we've had a pretty good look at Game Ranger, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the next option on the list, which is gonna be Tungle. We're gonna go ahead and jump right straight into this one. This is the link directly from that thread on gamereplays.org, and we go ahead and click on this download Tungle button, and we're moved to another page, which is gonna give you some information on the actual EXE file that we're gonna be downloading. Either one of these two green bars will bring you to that file location, so we'll go ahead and click on the, the upper left-hand one, and again, we're brought to another page, which gives you options as far as download mirrors. The idea behind these download mirrors is that, ideally, if there's high network traffic on one of the mirrors, you should be able to click on the other ones and get uh, much quicker download times, but I've had pretty good luck with this bottom one, so we're going to go ahead and click on that, and this is an important part. This gives all of the different versions of Tungle that have been created that are still available at the moment. So it goes all the way back to version 4.4.4.1, uh, but they are all the way up to version 4.5.1.4 beta at this point. So beta is always a little bit tricky, but I'm going to go ahead and click it anyways due to the fact that usually patches are going to be good for this type of stuff. So here we're brought to another link for Mediafire, and we're actually given the option to to click the download for this particular file so we can see that it is the file that I want. I'm going to go ahead and click on download and we can see it's actually sent straight down into my downloads tab. Again, I'm using Google Chrome so it may look a little bit different for you guys using Internet Explorer or Firefox or whatever else it may be, Safari or whatnot. But at any rate, if you do get this pop-up ad, it is in fact an advertisement. You'll see it says download manager. Sometimes this advertisement varies and even with Adblock Plus, it won't, it won't be blocked. It still pops up. Don't click on any of this stuff, guys. This is all bloatware. You don't need it. You don't need it in order to install Tungle. So we'll go ahead and close that down. We don't need to worry about it too much. And we'll actually go ahead and close this entire web page down and move straight on to the download. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and get into my downloads. And as we can see, we do have Tungle downloaded. So I'm going to go ahead and unzip this here. And you'll need some kind of an unzipping tool. So WinZip or there's a, a billion different zipping tools. WinZip is probably the most popular. So I'm going to use that here. I believe that's what I have. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and extract files to the folder. And from here, you can see I have an old version of Tungle that I downloaded and, and tried out. But I'm going to be using the new version. So from here, we go in, in and we can see that there's another zip file, which is going to be the archive for this and then the actual setup application. You want to click on this application it will say application and sometimes if you have file extensions turned on you'll see exe that's the one you want so we'll go ahead and click on that we'll click on run if that menu does pop up depending on your windows security preferences and from here we can go ahead and get into the actual installation so from here i'm going to go ahead and select english as my language as i'm an english speaker blah blah blah. welcome to the setup wizard yes we'll go ahead and click next would you like to check if a newer version of this program is available so if you ended up clicking on one of the older versions and downloaded that you do have the option to actually just go ahead and update straight from this client itself. I'm going to go ahead and click no because I know I have the most recent version. And from here it's saying that it's still checking for updates. I'm not quite sure why it's doing that. I asked it specifically not to, but I'm sure this is probably just a forced method through this actual game client. So we're just going to have to wait for this installer to go through the process of installing. So here we are at the Tungle setup. And once again, I'm going to go ahead and click on the custom installation. You can click on the simple installation if you'd like. I don't particularly like that because a lot of times it'll end up adding bloatware. So I click on custom installation. We're going to go there. And as we can see, perfect example of why you click on custom is the typical installation installs this Tungle desktop gadget. Uh, I mean, it's up to you guys. I'm not going to get into the details of this. 
it's totally up to you as to whether or not you want to install it. I don't want it, so we're going to go ahead and click Next. Again, end user license agreement, pretty standard stuff. I'm going to go ahead and click Accept, and we're going to move on to the next setup. So from here, we're actually going to select where our install path goes. Again, I'm just going to leave it as default. You guys can set it to whatever you want, uh, but we won't worry about that for now. And from here, I'm actually just going to deselect this additional skins. This is just additional skins and to change the look of the actual Tungo client. I'm not going to bother with any of that stuff. That doesn't matter to me at all. Uh, you guys can make that choice for yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. So from here, you can change whatever the name you want to be for the Start Menu folder. And you can actually choose to not create a Start Menu folder altogether. But I will go ahead and do that. And from here, you can choose to create a desktop icon, quick launch icon. Again, I'm going to deselect quick launch icon because I don't want more stuff down in my bottom bar. I just want the desktop icon. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And from here, we get a quick uh, synopsis of what's actually happening. We can see the download, or rather the destination location, as well as the install type and the different things that are going to be installed. So this does install that network adapter. This is something that's going to make it different from Game Ranger, and I'll explain that in just a moment. But that is something that you don't have to worry about. You do want to install the network adapter, otherwise Tungle will not work. So we'll go ahead and click Install and just wait for the install process to take place. It shouldn't take very long at all. It looks like it's actually done. We just need to wait for this to close. And now we're actually brought to the final step of this setup wizard, and it will tell you that you need to restart. For the purpose of the video, I'm not going to restart. I would recommend that you guys do restart anytime that a program installs something, especially a network adapter. You definitely want to restart, or rather restart your computer. It's a very important step of the process. It just kind of keeps everything clean. And, uh, and keeps the cogs moving. So I'm gonna go ahead and say no and click finish. So from here, we're gonna get into the actual use of the Tungle client. All right, and just a quick heads up before I actually click on the Tungle beta, be sure to turn your headphones down if you do have them on as you will find out very shortly why that is. Uh, but at any rate, we're gonna go ahead and double click on that. And we're gonna open it up and now I'll let this go ahead and take away what I'm trying to say. So once again, everybody, this is one of the things that I hate about these clients is that they have advertisements. And this one in particular has some very, very loud video advertisements that autoplay as soon as you start the client. So this one in particular is definitely one that I recommend muting straight away. So again, very similar to the way that we did it with Game Ranger. Get in here into your volume mixer. I'll go ahead and show you guys that process again. Click on this little uh, speaker icon down in the bottom right hand corner. Once you get here, you click on mixer. And from here, you can find the Tungle program or whatever program it is that's making the sounds. And you'll turn that all the way down. Um, I mean, if you guys want that turned on, by all means, leave it on. But I, I find that to be a very, very troubling experience. So we're going to go ahead and close down that advertisement. That advertisement does pop up every single time you start Tungle. So there's absolutely no way to get around it. And from here, we're brought into the main client. So it's not hugely obvious what you do from this point as there's just kind of stuff everywhere. Tungle is a very cluttered client from what I've seen and I'm not a particular fan but at any rate it does work. Again these are advertisements. Uh, this is just giving you an, uh, the top member of the day. I don't particularly see that as being useful but here down in the bottom we can actually see the login information. It's kind of hidden. You wouldn't notice this right away if, unless you were looking for it as typically logins are in the upper left hand corner or on the top or even the upper right hand corner, you don't typically see logins on the bottom of a, a client like that. It is that way on this client and we can see here if you don't have an account yet, you can click here to register. So you can just click on this bar here. I'm not going to do that right now because I've already done that. So if you haven't registered an account yet for Tungle, which is probably going to be the case if you're watching this video, be sure to click on this, register an account. Again, I've done this. I've registered an account, set it up with my email account and I have yet to get any emails from Tungle, so you don't have to worry about getting spammed. So go ahead and register your account. Once you get that information, you're gonna come down into the username and password and enter that information in. And we're gonna go ahead and click on Remember Me. You can go ahead and have this auto login. Um, I'm not a particular fan of auto logins, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that deselected, and I'm gonna click Login. And from here, we can see that the client is just going through the login process. It's authenticating, blah, 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 blah. We're not going to worry about what else it has to say. And we actually do see that something has popped up in the background. 
and I'll explain what this is. So we can see it's asking to set network location. This is a feature of Windows 7, so if you're running a different version of Windows, it may look a little bit different, but we can see it says set a location for network 3. And this is because of the fact that Tungle is installing a network adapter. What it is is a virtual network adapter is essentially just a, a tool that allows you to create a fake IP address on the internet. So what it's doing is it's generating a, its own fake IP address based off of the Tungle client, and the Tungle client can manipulate that IP address to allow you to do these various things that we're going to be doing moving forward. So you do need it. It isn't harmful, and it isn't something where you're going to get hacked or anything like that. So don't worry about it. We'll leave it as a public network so that, that way it does recognize it as something that uh, we don't want to have too many things being able to pipe their way into this. And we'll go ahead and close that down. So now that we're at this point, let's go ahead and try to figure out how we actually get into a game. So first we're actually going to look to see if we can get into the network lobby for Command & Conquer 3 Kane's Wrath, which is going to be the, the game that I'm testing this with. So from here we're going to be looking at the Network Explorer on the left hand side, or the Network Search. The Network Explorer, you can sit here and you can sift through all of the different options or the different games that are supported by this, and you can see that each of these rooms has 255 slots, and you can see the number of players that are in each one. And you can go through this and find the game that you're playing. Personally, I like to go into the network search. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in canes. And we can see, bam, it pops up all of the different canes options that, that would be selected. So we can see canes wrath, canes wrath one vision, as well as the canes wrath unofficial. I believe this is 1.03 patch. For whatever reason, the 1.03 patch seems to be supported by Tungle. Perhaps uh, if we make a large enough splash, we can get 1.02 plus supported by Tungle uh, natively so that that way we can create our own lobby. But at any rate, we can go ahead and jump into the Command & Conquer 3 Kane's Wrath lobby. We can see there's six people in there right now, which is kind of surprising due to the fact that we're on Tungle and it is a terrible time at night. But something important to mention here is once I actually get an opportunity to back out is once I click on Kane's, if there is something that I want to save, like let's say I don't want to necessarily jump into this network search and look up Kane's every single time I'm looking for, to jump into Kane's Wrath. I can right click on this and say add to bookmarks and it will create this bookmarks tab. This tab will, will remain persistent throughout every time you close Tungle. So you'll have this to come back to every time. So any games that you wanna be able to use Tungle with, you can quickly create that, that bookmarks page and get into this really quickly. So we're already in that lobby. So I'm gonna go ahead and close down these extra ones. You do have to have at least one of these open here and I'm gonna leave the bookmarks open as well just because I like bookmarks. But we're gonna be saying, seeing the intro to this lobby, we can see Welcome to Tungle, blah, blah, blah. They do have their own Ventrilo servers, so if you guys have any questions, you can jump in there and talk to people that are on Tungle, and we're gonna be able to take a look and see what's going on. So from here, there is a chat lobby, and we'll go ahead and say, oh, hi. And perhaps somebody will respond, but we can see there are a number of people in here right now. These are all the players that are going to be currently here. And you can right click on any one of these players and say view profile. You can sort their nicknames. You can add to a blacklist. So if it's somebody that you don't like or is spamming you, you can block them. You can add them to your friends list. You can copy their IP to your clipboard, blah, blah, blah. Sort by ping. It's quite nice. So actually, you know what? I am going to go ahead and sort by ping. So we can see the ping, the players with the lowest ping to me are going to be highest on this list. So they're going to be my first options, or rather the best options for connection in a solid manner. But we can see at this point, again, we don't really know how to join a game. What, what do we do at this point? This isn't like Game Ranger where we can just click, you know, join game. So what do we do? That's a good question. And down in the bottom left hand corner, again, not inherently obvious. But we can see it says virtual IP, and I might actually blow this up on, on the video so you guys can see what it says. It says virtual IP 7.82.68.89. So what is that? That's the virtual IP that the, the network adapter that we installed is generating, and that's going to be the virtual IP for the lobby that we want to jump into. So we're going to go ahead and minimize Tungle because we don't really need it at the moment. Or actually, you know what? I will leave it up, and we're going to go ahead and start up Kane's Wrath. So I want, I'm going to go ahead and start it up through Origin. That's my typical way of going about it. If you have a different different launch setup, you can launch it however you want. It does not matter how you go about doing that. That's one of the things that I like about Tungle, as well as Evolve, which we'll be going into next, is you can launch the game however you want and the, the standard way that you would normally go about doing this. 
So we'll just have to wait for Kane's Wrath to actually start up here. And again, this process works with all of the other games as well you can, that are supported by these services. You can look into which games are supported by which services on your own. I'm not going to get into that right now. But the first thing that we need to do before we click on anything is we need to go into our options and settings. So from here, we're going to go ahead and click on network. And from here, we need to make sure that we have our IP set to that IP that was through Tungle. So I'm actually just going to alt tab just to show you guys that it was indeed that IP address 7.82.68.89. Let's go back to Kane's Wrath and 7.82.68.89. So that's exactly the same IP address as the one that Tungle was supporting. So we're going to go ahead and click done. And now from here, we're going to go to multiplayer. And the important thing here is we go to network. We do not want to click on online. Online is strictly for the official hosted servers from GameSpy or whichever server hosting that EA is choosing to use. We know that this is not going to work. So, I mean, if we're using this alternative server setup, this is why. It's because the online system doesn't work. So we're not going to click on that. We're going to go ahead and click on network. So this would be the local area network games lobby. And we can see we're already in here. So we're in here with these other players that are in the lobby, and we can see this one is uh, UK Sniper V2. He was one of the members that was in the lobby. We can see Kang PC on the left-hand side. He is showing up as an option. And once we scroll over, we can see the players that are in those, those games. And I can actually join in and see, and we can actually see all of the players that are in here. So UK Sniper V2, again, this looks exactly the same as any others. And we'll actually say hi to him. How's it going? And he may or may not respond but we can see it works very very well and we can back out and rejoin at any point in time I will likely try to get a game here just to show you guys what the in-game looks like to see if there's gonna be any lag due to the fact that we're using Tungle and the fact that there's an added network adapter and we'll be jumping into that momentarily all right, everybody, so my good friend Apex here has been kind enough to join me in this excursion into Tungle. So we're going to go ahead and get jumped right into a game here just to show you guys what it actually looks like in-game. And we can see he's already readied up, so we're going to go ahead and jump straight in. This is just to show you guys that there isn't any added latency due to the fact that we're using a different network connection as opposed to the online server hosting. So we'll be able to jump in, and I'm just going to start spamming some units and different key commands in order to get going here. And as we can see, the user interface is real nice and clean. I can still sw swap back and forth with my hotkeys without any issue whatsoever. And we're going to be dropping buildings left and right. And we can see it's still still going very easily and still no lag whatsoever. We'll actually check in with Apex in just a second here, see if he's getting any lag. And we can see even the cell commands, they're still going pretty fast. It's just my poor ability to micro here. And we'll just sell that. And we'll ask him in the chat. Are you getting any lag? And we should get some kind of a smart-ass response. I would imagine, provided that he knows how to type into chat. And as we can see, it still moves very, very smooth. And I mean, granted, my computer is pretty much uh, a beast. And yes, he's typing in chat, and it is exactly as I expected, a smart-ass response. But in any rate, you guys can see that this is running very smooth. Again, you will probably see some lag just uh, some normal lag that you would get in a normal network game or a normal online game rather and uh, it's not going to be any any added issue here so I'm going to go ahead and sell up out of this and that's going to pretty much do it for Tungle everybody we're going to be jumping into Evolve next so be sure to stick around and we'll give you the rundown on that but finally we come to the final option and this is by far my most preferred option at least thus far it is Evolve Evolve is going to be very, very similar to Tungle, which was just discussed, but it's going to be a little bit better, I think, in terms of the the user interface, as well as uh, the fact that it has a nice in-game client. So we'll go ahead and discuss that in just a moment, but let's go into the process of actually installing this program. So again, this link has been provided just strictly by that link on the gameReplace.org website. So we'll go ahead and download the Evolve client straight from here and you guys can actually see me clicking on this so you'll know it's gonna be safe. Again, I have that Adblock Plus running so you may see advertisements on this page that I do not. Do not be too concerned. It's very, very safe website. And again, this client is definitely safe to install. So we'll go ahead, download it, run it, and we'll minimize this page once again 
And we're installing this so we can see, welcome to Evolve, we're glad you've decided, blah, blah, blah. And I'm gonna go ahead and click Advanced. Anytime I get an option to click Advanced or Installers, I do choose to do that because a lot of times it will allow you to choose your install path and configure a couple of different options for startup as well. So we'll go ahead and click Next. And here we can select the install directory and I'm actually gonna go ahead and leave it the way that it is. In my C drive, again, you have to accept the terms of the agreement. Again, that's gonna be the end user agreement. Pretty typical stuff. Not gonna get into that too much. We'll go ahead and click install and we can see it's downloading the installation package and it's gonna go through the process of actually installing. We'll just have to wait through the process of this installation. But I have to say Evolve is definitely, definitely gonna be my preferred method of choice as far as the alternative hosting is concerned. It's and the most user-friendly in my opinion, as well as the most streamlined user interface. So we can see the installation is done and now it's gonna go ahead and launch the client. And here we're brought straight into the login screen. And this is gonna be, it's gonna ask you for your nickname and password. And let's say, okay, I'm brand new to Evolve. I don't have a nickname or password, what do I do? There's a register button down here in the bottom right-hand corner. Again, you click on that, it will bring you to the Evolve website. You do have to register an account. Again, this is a situation where I've tested this, I've created an Evolve account, I've had it for quite some time. I have yet to be hit with even a single email from their service. No advertisements, no spam, no nothing. Even my spam filter is clear. I don't, I'm not getting anything from these guys, so it's definitely safe, at least from my perspective. And we'll go ahead and log in with the account that I've created. And you can choose to log me in automatically. Now, an important thing to notice here is this means that it will log you in using this, you, nickname as well as password automatically into Evolve, not automatically into Windows. This is something we're gonna be talking about in just a second, but we'll go ahead and click on that and log in. So here we are, we're brought up with a couple of different pages here. And as we can see, I'm already a member of a group. So we'll actually close that down because we're not gonna be discussing that just yet. But at any rate, we again, very similar to the way that Game Ranger was set up. We have these two different windows. We have the main window, which is going to be kind of your all feature access where you can get in and see the different games. You can get into the multiplayer matchmaking as well as see the different things that they have going on. They've got news. And again, this is their way of keeping up with the user base, you know, providing advertisements as well as advertising their own service. But the nice thing is, is you also have a feed. So when you add friends, you can actually see what's going on. It's very similar to, you know, stuff like Facebook or Battle Log or whatever it may be that you use to keep up with people that are online. And we can see I have Plokite Wolf as a friend here and I can actually see everything that he's doing. And again, this is all stuff that you can configure. If you don't necessarily want everybody to see what you're doing, you can go into your user settings and blah, blah, blah. I'm not gonna get into all of that. So in any case, we're gonna go ahead and plop up the news. I'm not gonna be using this home option very much. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and close this down. There's really not much that I can do here. If I wanted to go into a multiplayer, I can go in here and actually search for a game in the, the game that I'm looking to play in. So whether that's Kane's Wrath, Red Alert 3, or maybe even World of Warcraft, whatever it may be, I can do that from here or you can create a party. So again, I'm gonna be closing this down and I'm gonna be moving on. So this is gonna be the main page that I'm looking at here. And this is gonna be my friends list. And we can see here that we have a couple of different options here. We can see that Monster Tamer and Plokite Wolf, again, are both offline. So you can see all of your friends. And again, I believe when friends are online, you can actually see them just above. It will show online. We'll actually go ahead and add a friend here. So again, we have Triberium X to test here. So we'll be adding a friend. We have his nickname. Go ahead and send the invite. And he should be accepting that hopefully soon so that that way we can get this going will be underway all right so the way that you actually get into a game and you can get players in and set up so that that way they can actually play in the game with you is we're gonna have to go through the process of creating a party or rather joining a party whichever you may be using but we're gonna go ahead and click on the the friends button the drop down menu and we'll go ahead and say create party so from here we're gonna be showing up with a, a notification that we have to install the Evolve Network Adapter. So what is an Evolve Network Adapter? So the way that Evolve works is it works very similar to Tungle in the sense that it installs a network adapter to your computer, which essentially creates a virtual IP address for you. So what that means is it's gonna it's gonna create more or less a fake IP address that's which is gonna allow you to connect 
to these other players through these network lobbies. And so we'll go ahead and install this here. I know that this is safe. I've done this once before, or rather several times before, and can confirm that it does work and it doesn't harm your computer at all. We'll go ahead and get in here and we can see that it does generate its new IP. And we'll go ahead and send a party invite out to our good friend here. And I believe his name is X. So you just start typing in the early letters of the player's name and you can see they'll go ahead and pop up and you can click invite. Alternatively, you can actually select the player here and say invite to party. You can do it however you want, but I like the invite player option directly from this menu. And we can see that he is sitting in here as an invite. And then when the actual party, you actually have to select from in here. From, from this point, you have to actually select the party game. So because Evolve works with so many different games, you actually do have to choose the game that you're gonna be going for. And we can see, we'll look up command and conquer, and we can see Kane's Wrath pops up straight away. So we'll go ahead and click on that and we'll click next. So here you're given the party wizard, so you have to select the party mode. You can say host game or find a game. So you can click on find a game if like you say, you wanna have you and your friend there join a game that somebody else has hosted that they've put as a public game. So you can actually join in as a team or you can actually use this method as a, a way of actually searching for other games. So we're gonna go ahead and host a game and we'll click next. And the minimum players, we'll just say 32, or actually no, we'll say minimum players as two, but again, this is optional and we'll say maximum players 32. I'm gonna leave them both blanked because to be honest, it doesn't really matter. And we'll go ahead and click finish. We can see here that Riberium X has been added to the party. He j has gone ahead and accepted the invite and we can see that his, his virtual network adapter is generating that virtual IP that is very similar to mine. It's just a point off. But at any rate, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the game. So what do we do here? I mean, I, there's no button that says play game, join game, what do we do? So this is the cool thing about Evolve that is different from Game Ranger in the sense that you don't actually have to click anything from the actual client itself. You just have to have the client running to create that virtual IP address so that that way you can actually join into the game and you can join in and leave as you, as you like. As long as you have that IP address available, you can rejoin at any point in time. So we're gonna go ahead and launch our game however the way that we prefer. I believe I've already launched my game, so I'll go ahead and click on it and jump right in. We'll just be seeing this typical startup sequence from Kane's Wrath. And from here, the first thing that you wanna do is click on that options button and go into your settings. And from here, we'll go to network. And the important thing that you gotta do here, and this I cannot stress enough, you have to do this, otherwise this service will not work. You need to change your IP address to the one that is generated by Evolve. And I'll actually show you guys that that is in fact the one that's generated by Evolve by using the cool in-game client that Evolve has. So what you do is you click on the Windows button on your keyboard and bam, you've got that in-game overlay. It's very similar to Steam. If any of you have used Steam, you'll be certainly familiar with how this process works. It's a bit of a different key combination to get there, but at any rate, it is the Windows key by default for Evolve. And we can see it brings up our, our little Evolve client here just as a nice little overlay and it just kind of makes this a little bit more opaque in the background. At any rate, we can see the IP address here. It's 10.122.66.2. So we'll go ahead and close that down and we'll select the correct IP address. Bam, and we'll say done. And from here, the important thing that you wanna do is you wanna to go to multiplayer, not online. You will not be using online anymore. That online is just strictly for official hosted services. Otherwise it will not work. So we'll go ahead and click on network. This will bring us into the network lobby. And from here, we'll be able to see the players that are in the lobby that are actually connected to the party that are generating that IP address and are connected. So we can see that Troll has connected and he's connected successfully using that IP address. So he is here. We can see him. We'll go ahead and say, hey, Troll, what's up? And I mean, this is, again, the similar chat system to the way that Kane's Wrath already works in the online lobby. And again, you can host games, you can you can join games, you can leave games, do whatever you want. It's not much of an issue. And the really cool thing that I like about this is the fact that you can close down Kane's Wrath, no problem. Everybody else can stay in the game, they can continue to play, they can continue to use the lobby, no big deal. They don't have to change lobbies, they don't have to you know change their IP address again, 
go to some other different service and boom so we're all set to go here i like this service a lot and we'll see about actually getting a game set up so we can show you guys that once again there really isn't any lag that's generated through this service it's going to be exactly the same there's no added level of latency here so we're going to go ahead and create a game here we've got once again troll report gg or triberium x he's going to be joining and it joins pretty quickly here and we'll see we'll join straight into a game once again this is just going to be a test game we're going to be just testing this out just to see if there's any lag and whether or not we can actually connect and get in game and it looks like we're going to get in absolutely no problems whatsoever and we're connecting very very quickly Building. that's very nice as well and once again we're actually across the globe from one another so this is quite a good test opportunity and and as you can see i'm not getting any options. any user interface lag it's working Building. quite nicely construction complete construction go ahead and continue to Building. use hotkeys a little Train. bit of lag right there but i think that's more complete. just due to the fact that we're across the globe from one another rather than the game lagging itself Rifle due to squad. evolve you can see it's responding to commands very quickly I'll ask him if he's getting any lag, but I'm not. Squad ready. So I am pretty happy with this so far, and he's saying nope. Okay, I so I think this is a pretty uh, pretty successful test run. We'll go ahead and drop down our refinery just to show that, that it's working. And we'll go ahead and sell up here. And that's going to do it for Evolve. It's pretty straightforward. I really love this system. I think it works really well. I'm looking forward to getting some games going with Evolve and getting some parties set up. And, uh, and in any case, I appreciate you all taking the time to watch this video. Obviously, there will be some information that is missed, so be sure to leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what you guys think. Obviously, if there's anything else that, that I didn't touch on that perhaps you guys think is important that you would like to see incorporated or maybe even answered in an FAQ video after the fact, be sure to ask it. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that are posed. And uh, hopefully you guys all found this very useful. And I will catch you all next time.